Hey, hey, you guys, I'm here to do another ugly truth about love and relationships. I've been doing readings now for eight years, and I have seen some of the most desperate human beings. So desperate that these women, and yes, women mostly, they will put up with less than what they deserve. Why is it that every time we meet someone of the opposite sex, immediately our minds go to, is this the one? Is this gonna be the one that I spend the rest of my life with? What happened to just learning how to be friends? Why is it that you can't just meet somebody and just have a nice connection and go to lunch and chit chat and enjoy each other's company without automatically trying to trap them? by using your sexuality. I mean, it's like people are so desperate as of late to be in a relationship that they will give up their sovereign body to the wrong fool. And yes, they're a fool. As are you. When we can learn to enjoy our own company, that's when the magic begins. When you get to know yourself on a completely different level, not where somebody else is defining you, where somebody else is, you know, you have to walk on eggshells to be around a certain individual. You have to give up your body in ways that are so unsavory and pretty much disgusting just to keep someone it's not about a friendship anymore when it comes to relationships. It's about degrading yourself. And I watch this so often, more often than not. I see women in relationships where the masculine doesn't even want them. And they've made it very clear, I don't want you. Oh, but I'll wait for him. I see this one on social media all the time when I post a reel. I haven't left yet. I'm still waiting. What the fuck are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? I have never been one to put my life on hold waiting for somebody to choose me. I've been single now for pretty much 21 years. I got divorced at the age of 24 and I had a couple of boyfriends maybe for a couple of years in between and, you know... And I, it was always the same song and dance. You know, they want to fool around, but they don't want to commit. And after so long of just getting disappointed and heartbroken over love, I finally like took back my power and was like, you know what? I'm going to focus it on myself. Because at the end of the day, you're going to keep getting what you've always got. Or if, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always got. So if you are constantly putting yourself out there and, and, you know, having sex with just anybody because they give you a little bit of attention, you're going to end up right back where you are until you finally figure out the method. And sometimes that method is just you taking a step back and instead of trying to force something to come together on these dating, look at the dating apps nowadays. It's a bunch of garbage. It's a bunch of fishing. What do they call that? Catfishing? You can say whatever the fuck you want. Of course, anybody on a dating website is going to put their best foot forward. And then when you finally meet him, you're like, oh my God. But then because he was the only one <clears throat> on the dating app that gave you attention, you're going to try and fix it. It's silly to me. So for me, I took back my power a long time ago and I started working on myself and I, I, work, I was like, you know, I, I don't understand why I continue to end up with these unsavory relationships, whether they're abusive or they're cheaters or they're liars or, you know, they make you believe one thing, but they're not actually going to fulfill any of what they've told you. They'll keep you on the fence. Like I dated a guy last year for a couple of months, hadn't dated in like nine years, finally dated somebody, really nice guy. Um, and then all of a sudden he was just like everyone else. And then I find out like when I walked away, I was like, you know what, get your shit together. And if you really want to be in this relationship, then you'll actually work towards it. 
And then I find out he's taken other people out on dates, something he never did with me. And I was like, what the fuck, you know? And he's like, but no, 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 I, I you know, I, I was, I, well, you weren't going to be around. And I'm like, tried to turn it around on me. And I was like, you know, you're just like everyone else. Everyone else. And I see this time and time again with every relationship that I see with all my clients where they get into a relationship and they're like, but peace. And I'm like, dude, it's not the time to date. It's really not. Fix your fucking self. You jump from person to person to person to person. All you're doing is manifesting the same person in different skin. The same scenario, different person. Sometimes the same scenario, same person, because you keep going back to the same person. You want a relationship? Then you got to get your shit together. You got to clear all that karma that you have gathered. If you have a bunch of sexual karma because you spread your legs for every single fucking person that comes through, then you have karma built up and the universe goes, you knew damn well that this person didn't have your best interest at heart, but you continued to do this. So therefore now you're going to be single for a while. We'll open you up for another relationship, but later, but you'll try again and same situation, different player in the game. And you'll try again, same situation, different player in the game because you haven't healed anything. You haven't taken a step back and taken the time to realize that you're the common denominator of all the rises and falls in your relationships. You just jump from relationship to relationship thinking somebody's going to come in and fucking save you. No one's coming to save you. You have to save yourself. And trust me, if somebody pr pretends to come in and save you, there's always strings attached. And so at some point you have to wake up and you have to see the patterns in your relationships and realize it stems from you. You, you can't blame anyone else. And if you're still sitting around blaming your exes for, you know, what you think they did to you, then you are not healed. If you're still blaming yourself for what has happened in past relationships, then you are not healed. If you can take responsibility and understand the lesson of why you are where you are, then you're healed. We have to stop doing what we're doing. This Neptune at the 29th degree of Pisces is everybody in some fucking delusion right now. And I'll be honest with you, everybody's looking for somebody to save them. And me, I look around and I'm just watching people just running around like chickens with their heads cut off, just trying to get into any relationship, just some relationship, some person who just gives them like a little twinkle of an eye, you know, uh, you know, in their eye. And all of a sudden it's like, there's my person. And it's like, is it, is it? Because right now, that's not what I'm seeing. Right now, what I'm seeing is a bunch of men who, A, some of them can't even figure out if they're a boy or a girl or a fucking pickle. Others of them don't even know that they even want to be in a relationship anymore. We don't have men who back in the day used to fight for their women, who used to lift their women up. No, instead, right now, we have men who can't even figure out whether or not they even know enough about themselves and they need healing. Especially in my generation, you weren't allowed to cry. You weren't allowed to feel. You weren't allowed to hurt. You get back up on the wagon, son, and you do it again. You want to cry? I'll give you something to cry about. That's what our parents used to tell us. So right now we have a whole entire generation of people who are needing healing. And then you got these other, you know, generations and stuff who they don't want to commit. They don't even want to have kids anymore. They don't want to have a family. 
I see all these split families. You know what I've seen? And it, it, it's, it's so mind boggling to me. I was married at a time where we didn't have social media. Social media was put there to tempt people to cheat. Social media is literally put there to tempt couples to cheat on one another. Oh, your husband's liking so-and-so's pictures. Your wife is liking so-and-so's pictures. Now they're making plans behind the scenes to get together. It's, it's literally a cheating app. I don't call it Facebook. I call it fuckbook. Because at the end of the day, that's what everybody's trying to do. Everybody puts, you know, filters out their pictures because guess what? Even for me, like when I put out a fucking, a tarot reading on social media, I have to wear a filter. Otherwise they won't push my videos. Literally, that's part of it. Part of the program. You have to use filters. So now you got half the fucking world using filters and you don't even know what the person looks like. Everybody, like I said, you're going to put the best picture out there of yourself. You're not going to put the worst picture of yourself out there. You're going to tell everybody about the good old days, not what's really going on in your life. Is anybody even being honest anymore? Or we, are we just trying to be something that we're not? And then I look at relationships like, you know, I see relationships that are together and they have separate bank account. What the fuck is that all about? When you come together, you are one. Your finances become one. I see it's tit for tat. She's at home. She's taking care of the kids. He's out working during the daytime. She can't actually go to work until he gets home. And then he still wants her to pay half for a babysitter because he doesn't want to take care of a fucking babysitter. Or he doesn't want to take care of his own kids. Excuse me. What is that? You've invested all these children into a certain individual and now you don't even want to pay half the fucking bills. Like I don't understand where we're at in society when it comes to relationships. And I think everybody gets, needs to get their fucking heads checked at this point. I think the only sane people are the people who are actually fucking single and who are working on themselves and who are working on their finances and building their fucking legacy. Those are the smartest fucking people right now. Not people letting other people drive them fucking crazy just for some, a couple of hours of pleasure. Because that couple of hours of pleasure leaves you feeling like shit for weeks. When we're intimate with an individual, we are sharing our energy. Our bodies become one. And when we share that space with another individual, we need to know that that party has our best interest at heart. Because when we are in that tantric moment, we are, as feminines, trying to release all of this energy where are the masculines releasing ladies? So if they got issue, baby mama drama, they're pissed off at somebody, they're mad at their boss at work, they're going through, you know, stress with their own mother, you know, whatever, where are they releasing? So now they call you crazy. You're fucking crazy. Why are you crazy? Because they made you crazy. Because now, after they released in you, you can't decipher whether it's your own crazy or their crazy or the, the combination of crazy. And I'm sorry, gentlemen, any woman out there that tells you no strings attached, we won't catch feelings, they're fucking lying to you. There is no casual intimacy anymore. There hasn't been. You see this all the time. I've done it myself. It was just going to be a casual fling. And the next thing you know, you're spending a lot of time together and you're getting to know one another and it's no longer casual. And then as soon as you tell them, hey, listen, you know, I really have feelings for you. I think you're an amazing person and I would like to explore this further. They're like, oh, wait, <laughs> you know. Hold on. We said that this was just going to be casual. You, you can't get upset with me if I say that I don't want anything else. And now you've not only lost a lover, but you lost a friend. 
because they're going to do everything they can to stay away from you. I mean, they'll come back every once in a while as soon as they feel you, you know, finally moving on and doing your own thing. And that's how this always goes. It doesn't matter if it's just a casual fling or if it's, you know, somebody who doesn't want to commit, but they enjoy your time. And they'll do this every single time. As soon as they start feeling you drifting away, they reel you back in. Hey, how you doing? Want to get back together? You know, want to get together and uh, have a nice evening? You know what I mean? It's the bait and switch. And you're going to have to start seeing that ahead of time. And if you're, if you start noticing the signs, pay attention to the red flags, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> you know, because it's not just masculines that are doing this. This is ladies too. It, more often than not, it is the masculine. But ladies, you guys are getting pretty bad at this too. It's almost like, you know, I, I, I loved the old fashioned love, you know, where they courted one another. No, you don't court. You, automatically, you meet them on fucking, you know, on some dating site. You invite them over, you make them dinner, and you jump right into bed with them. There's nothing left to the imagination. And it's a bummer, you know? It's a real bummer because, you know, it's almost like losing weight, right? They have all these stupid fucking fads that if you, you know, if you do this, you'll lose like 30 pounds in one month. Well, the second you stop doing whatever it is that they've got you doing, you gain it all right back. So really what it is, is it takes, when you take a long time to lose weight, you're losing a pound every, you know, once a week. And, you know, people are like, but God, I feel like I'm not, you lose inches before you lose pounds. Okay. Just FYI. But when it takes you longer to lose weight, you're going to keep it off longer. The faster it takes for you to lose weight, you're going to put it on just as quick. Does that make sense? So same thing in relationships. If you guys can take time, get to know one another. Stop looking at everybody like, that's my person. We're going to move in together. We're already building our lives together. I'm, I'm seeing this one play out more times than not. Where people are just like, they meet, meet each other. Now they're all of a sudden building lives together. And you're like, you don't even fucking, you haven't even gotten into, into an argument yet. Yet you're already planning your entire, the rest of your life together. We need to go back to the way it used to be. We need to start courting one another again. We need to start getting used to, you know, getting used to this individual's energy before we plan the rest of our lives with somebody. Love is just not what it used to be. And honestly, I feel like the smartest people on this planet are the, are the single. The singles are the most fucking honorable right now. The people who are not just looking at every Tom, Dick, and Harry, wondering if that's their person or, you know, they're working on themselves. They want to be the best version of themselves that they can possibly be so that when they finally come into union, they don't actually repeat a pattern. And if you're serious about falling in love, then maybe it's time for you to work on yourself. Get through whatever has gotten you to this point in the first place. But honestly, after, you know, years and years and years of doing readings and stuff and watching, I just feel like I'm watching a bunch of, and I'm going to say this, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way towards, you know, people with Down syndrome, but I feel like they're the smarter ones and everybody else is retarded, especially when it comes to love and the things that people will do. I don't even think it's love. I think it's desperation because I'll be honest with you out of the people that I've met throughout the years, I've only maybe seen a couple of handfuls of people who genuinely love one another. I see other people who stay together because of the money. Oh, well, I can't afford the bill, so I'll stay here. I see other relationships stay together because of the kids. You're doing your children a disservice by staying together for them because you're teaching them that this is the way mommies and daddies treat one another. And they're going to do whatever you do. And the pattern continues. The pattern continues until somebody fucking breaks it. 
Shouldn't it be you? If you're the one watching this video, shouldn't it be you? If you have to wonder what your partner's doing behind your back, are they much of a partner in the first place? If you have to check their phone when they go to the bathroom and they happen to leave it out, is that the kind of relationship that you want to be in? I know I wouldn't. I think that the biggest takeaway from all of this is I think you guys need to look at your own side of the street. Look at your own patterns. And look at why it is that you choose to continue to put yourself in these unsavory situations with these unsavory individuals who always make you question and wonder where you stand in a relationship. Because at the end of the day, if you have to wonder where you stand, the answer is nowhere. I don't know, guys. Let me, uh, I want to pull a card and see whatever piece of advice. What piece of advice do you have, Spirit, for the collective, for what we just spoke about here today? <laughs> yeah, understand your why. What is this teaching me? Not why is this happening to me. Ask, what is this teaching me? Number 31. We don't always know why we engage in our relationships in the way that we do, mostly because our feelings aren't always logical. Now is the time to recognize whether you are being triggered by someone else or if your behavior is motivated, motivated by unresolved issues from the past. When you ask yourself, why am I feeling like this and why did I say that and spend some time in introspection, the answers may be surprising. Listen to the messages from your intuition, from the knowing deep within you. What does it tell you about yourself and others? In the end, life is all about being loved. Miracles and a deep understanding of your needs and how to get them met are buried treasures of the why. Uncover them by posing the most powerful question you can ask yourself or your partner today. Why? And I think for a lot of you, why are you still pining after somebody who doesn't want you? It's a fear of abandonment. Why are you still in a relationship when your partner has shown you they don't want you? Fear of abandonment. I think for a lot of you, you already know your why. You're just afraid of answering it because, well, then you might actually have to do the work. Because at the end of the day, walking away from things and actually recognizing that you're the common denominator can be really hard on the psyche. But if you want things to change, then you're going to have to do th something to change it. I'm going to leave that here, you guys. Uh, take this how you will. If you are interested in a personal reading, all my information's in the description box down below. I'm here to empower you guys and show you guys that there is another way if you're willing to step up and step out of your comfort zone. And some of you, your comfort zone is being in an abusive situation. And until you're ready to face that fact, you're gonna continue in the cyclical pattern and eventually people are gonna walk away from you because they're getting sick and tired of hearing your shit all the time, same song and dance all the fucking time. It does get old. Stop being so desperate. Love you guys all so much. The footsteps to peace.com. If you guys are interested in a personal reading, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It does help my channel grow. I love you guys all so much, and we will chat again soon. Take care.